So I must say I followed the little altercation there between the skeptical heretic and Meridian Frost with quite a bit of interest. It was a very good dialogue between the two to start with. It was done in good nature, which is a joy to behold on a site like this, to be perfectly honest with you. And both of them made excellent videos arguing their points. And I must say, as a result, I have certainly liked both of those videos and I agree with most of what both of them are saying. However, I do need to nitpick, because you know I love nitpicking, I do need to nitpick a little bit on the points that Meridian Frost was making, because I think he's kind of missed a trick in his video. It's still 99% excellent, don't get me wrong, but I do think he misstepped on one or two occasions. And I think where it happened is, first of all at the start of the video, when he announced that the skeptical heretic had been inconsistent, and then later on he kind of clarifies in further comments why he thinks he's being inconsistent, and I can then identify where he's making a fundamental mistake in his assessment. So let me get to the point. He says the skeptical heretic is being inconsistent because on the one hand he is in agreement with people who said that if religion were to sort of go away that would certainly not be a bad thing, it would be a good thing, especially if dogmatic religions and so on would disappear, that would be a good thing. But then on the other hand which seems contradictory, of course, I have to agree, on the surface it sounds contradictory, he says that nothing much would change. We would still have lots and lots of problems. That part of humanity wouldn't actually change. Now, Meridian Frost thinks that that's being inconsistent, but I think, and this is where I refer to comments he makes later on in the video, that all sort of hint at this, he's making that mistake because he seems to be under the impression that religion is a root cause of a lot of problems. And of course, in that case, if it is a root cause, remove the root cause and problems do go away. At least some problems do go away. So the world, by and large, you would, you would think at least, might be better off. Yeah. However, I can't buy into the idea that the religion is a root cause of problems. That doesn't just sit right with me, because it almost seems to me that that would imply, to some way, to some extent, that the religions seem to sort of have popped into, existent out of, into existence out of nowhere. And if we can't look at what might be responsible for creating the religion, if we have to look at the religion as the root cause of the problems, then how did this religion even come into being? Now, a religious person would have an easy answer. They would just kind of pontificate and say, like, well, God handed it down to us and we are following its edicts. But if you're atheistic, you simply cannot buy into that narrative. So religion must have come from somewhere. It must have arisen out of something. And I would argue, and I can't see how anybody could possibly disagree, with me, that that something, whatever was responsible for creating the religion, whatever religion arose out of, is a better candidate for a root cause than religion would be. So when we identify religion as a cause of problems, then yes, of course, if we were to get rid of that particular religion, that particular set of dogmas, then those particular problems that we have identified would go away. But if religion is produced as a result of something deeper and more fundamental, then we are only buying a little bit of time when we do that, because that problem would still be there, it would give rise to something new, which would ultimately be probably just as bad as the religion that it replaced. So we need to look deeper and we need to look at what motivates people. What motivates those people who end up creating 
religions. Why do they do it? And the reason why they do it, in my opinion, is that they want somehow to exert some influence, they want to manipulate, they want to control and direct the people around them, the other people in the society in which they take part. The people who end up creating religions are people who fancy themselves to be leadership figures of some description. And that, I think, is a more fundamental problem that underlies the creation of things such as religions or ideologies or that underlies the installment of the coming to power of despots and tyrants and the likes. All of this is the result of an innate human tendency that many of us share to want to be top dog, to want to be the person in charge, to want to be the person that people answer to, rather than the person who is following orders. This tendency leads people to try and manipulate the people around them in any way they can. If it's not through pretending to be the mouthpiece for some invisible, omnipotent, omniscient authority figure in the sky, then it is to pretend to be the person who has best grasped the concepts of some sort of social ideology or something like that. The end result is always going to be the same. The end result is going to be a clique, a ruling class of people who order other people around, who try to exert influence on them, who tell them what to do, and who are causing huge problems. So, in that sense, the skeptical heretic was perfectly right. Now, I don't see it as a result of traditions. I see it as a result of this innate human tendency of trying to come out on top, trying to be the top dog, trying to be in control, trying to be the boss. That is what is, to me at least, a more fundamental cause of the problems that we attribute to religion than the religion itself. The religions are a symptom of this deeper cause. And if you understand that, then you understand why the skeptical heretic was at least in his assessment that by removing religions you're not going to make the world ultimately a better place is probably and sadly correct.